This is a bonus episode of the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. A couple of months ago on the podcast, we had someone that mentioned that instead of taking a security deposit, she has her tenants buy her an insurance policy. And that insurance policy pays the rent if the tenant defaults and doesn't pay. And if the tenant damages the property, the insurance policy pays to get it fixed up again. And I had never heard of anything like this before. And Jesse, I wanted to bring you on the show today because your company offers this policy. I wanted to kind of pick your brain and learn more about it. Now, this is different from a landlord policy. This doesn't protect the actual property, right? Correct. So this is protecting against any rent-related defaults. And our deposit coverage will also cover you for any uh, property damage or anything you would have typically withheld from a cash security deposit. But you are correct in saying this is separate from a home homeowner's insurance policy. This sounds very interesting. So on this bonus episode, we're going to figure out how this insurance policy works. We'll see exactly what it covers. We'll figure out what it costs. And me and you together can figure out if this is something that we should be doing with our rental properties. Joining us on the show today from The Guarantors is Jesse Schmidt. We'll take a really quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Jesse. I want to let you know about a really easy way to track your rental income and expenses. It's an accounting software custom made for rental property investors. It takes just seconds to enter an expense or to record that you collected rent. It makes tax time really easy. Just run a report and give it to your tax person and you are done. They're currently offering a free 30-day trial. There's no credit card required, so if you don't like it, there's nothing to cancel. You can learn more and sign up today at rentaltrial.com. That's rentaltrial, T-R-I-A-L, rentaltrial.com. Rental Income Podcast. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like this would eliminate the need for us taking a security deposit, right? That is correct. Yeah, our coverage is fully customizable at the guarantors, and it does allow you to get extra protection while also eliminating the need to collect a cash security deposit. However, that is optional. There are some landlords that would prefer to hold a cash security deposit, which is completely fine. You could use our our coverage as sort of sort of an added layer of protection if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I don't think that a one month security deposit really protects us very much. I mean, if a tenant does five thousand dollars of damage and it takes you six months to evict them, you're going to be out a lot of money as a landlord. Where it sounds like your insurance policy would basically cover all that, so we would be made whole for the damage and for the lost rent, right? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, like you said, you know, landlords are limited as far as what they can collect in in security deposits in many different states. And our coverage really adds, again, an added layer of protection covering you for any rent default, any vacancy loss, you know, any even lease termination fees that potentially the tenant doesn't pay. In addition to the deposit coverage portion that will cover you for damages and legal fees and, you know, unpaid utilities, for instance. All right. So it, it sounds like there's really kind of two different categories of what you're covering. So you've got the lost rent and then also for damages. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So our, it's really one policy with two different types of coverage as a part of that. And so the guarantor's lease guarantee or rent coverage is what's going to cover you for any of those rent, uh, rent-related rent defaults. And our deposit coverage is what's going to protect you for anything more you know, damage or legal fee related. That will also cover any excess uh, missed rent as well. So is it just kind of open-ended that it's just going just gonna to cover everything? Or is it something where we would have to decide up front, okay, I want to get this month's uh, th- this many months of rent coverage and this much in damages? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so it's fully customizable for landlords. And really, the only limitation is the dollar amount of coverage that a landlord requires a tenant to purchase on each policy. And you can file a claim for really anything the tenant is responsible for under your lease. 
Okay. All right. So let's kind of walk through like a hypothetical scenario. So say I have a tenant that doesn't pay rent. What what happens? Do I go about filing the eviction like I normally would, or do I just contact you to file a claim? How does it work? Ultimately, if you know the tenant does default, you would go about your normal process to try and regain possession of the apartment. Once you do regain possession through either an abandonment or an eviction, like you mentioned before, or even if the lease ends, at that point, we'll pay all of the past due rent and vacancy loss uh, within that original lease term. And even an added benefit will even pay the difference in rent. Let's say you have a $1,000 a month apartment and the the tenant defaults, let's say, in month six. If you end up re-renting that apartment at, let's say, $900, because maybe market conditions uh, required you to, we'll actually pay the $100 difference for the remaining months under that original lease. Wow. So we would actually pay, let's say, you know, 600 extra dollars. Now, what about the actual filing of the claim? Is there a lot of paperwork involved? Is it a complicated process? Like, how does it, how does it work on my end? No, it's really simple. So in our landlord portal, which once you sign up your properties, you'll have access to the guarantor's uh, landlord portal. And right there, you have the ability to file a claim. Only takes about five minutes to fill out the the form on our website. From there, really all you have to do is upload a copy of the resident's uh, ledger. So any, you know, documentation accounting wise of the tenant's uh, rent payments. And from there, we calculate how much is owed and you'll actually get paid within three to five business days. Wow. Okay. And so it's at the end of, at the, after the eviction is over, then you would make a back payment if you're not. So if, if it dragged on for three or four months, you're not paying me every month. You would pay us at the the end of the eviction. So the point of repossession. Yes. So okay. um, if it's let's say it's an abandonment, if the tenant abandons the apartment, we'll start paying immediately. If they owed two months of rent when they abandoned the unit, we'll continue to pay on a monthly basis until you get that unit re-rented. So once you regain possession, then we'll actually pay on a monthly basis. Now, what about trying to reach out to the tenant to um, to try to get them to pay? Is that something that you guys do to maybe minimize your cost or minimize the, the amount of time that the property would be vacant? Of course we do, Dan. Okay. <laughs> we're, all, uh, we're all on the same team here. Yeah. You know, ultimately, the goal is to mitigate that delinquency and and really help facilitate the conversation between the landlord and the tenant. Okay. So we're we are really always acting as an extension of, you know, the landlord or the property management team when communicating with the tenant and we found it really beneficial. You know, sometimes there's uh, a strained uh, relationship between landlord and tenant or the tenant may not be responding, but a third party who they purchased an insurance policy from, they might be a little bit more responsive to. So right, we help okay. remind them of their obligations under the lease and try to get them to the table to negotiate. Yeah, I guess that works out better for you too. I mean, if you can get the tenant paying, then you guys don't have to pay out a claim. Exactly. So it, it, it's a win-win for both of us. Now, what about if there was an eviction moratorium? And I'm thinking back to COVID when in a lot of areas, the courts were closed and you couldn't evict for a little bit. Would something like that be excluded or would you still pay out during some kind of an eviction moratorium? Great question. So definitely not excluded. Uh, The good news is that the eviction moratorium during the pandemic didn't impact our ability to actually pay claims. It did, however, prolong, obviously, the eviction process. So, you know, if you had a tenant who had three months of unpaid rents originally during the moratorium, it may have ballooned to, let's say, six or eight months. Um, But we worked very closely with all of our landlord partners to ensure that we were able to pay all of those claims out quickly and efficiently. But it didn't impact them getting paid. It just sort of prolonged the process a little bit. And so this is something that the tenant would buy. So it's not an extra expense for the landlord. This is paid for by the tenant. That's completely correct. The guarantors is completely free for landlords to take advantage of and use our products. The policies are paid for by the tenants themselves. All right. So what is the cost? Like, can you walk me through like an example of what this would cost? Sure. So I'll give you a few examples, because, again, 
uh, the coverage with the guarantors is really customizable. So let's say you have a higher risk uh, applicant applying for one of your vacant units. Let's say they're a student with no income and let's just say they have no credit history. Maybe they're coming from overseas or maybe they're just you know, a, a, a younger student that hasn't built up credit history. In that uh, situation, let's say it's a thousand dollar a month apartment, you're requiring the tenant to guarantee essentially the full lease with us. So let's say 11 months of rent coverage and one month to cover the security deposit. The cost for the renter is only going to be $760 or about 76% of a month's rent. And the great news in that example is you don't even have to collect a security deposit from that tenant. And now you're getting 12 months of protection on the back end. Okay. All right. That's interesting. So it's cheaper than a security deposit. So the benefit to the tenant is that they're having to bring less money to move in. And then as the landlord, we're protected because this is protecting us for any damage or for lost rent. So like that, that really, really kind of sounds like a no brainer. Am I missing anything here? No, it, no. it is. Uh, it is in fact a no brainer and it is, it is real. It's insurance that protects your, your rental income. All right. So w- with the, the first example you gave us of $760, that, that was for somebody with, with no credit or bad credit. What, like, what if someone has decent credit? You know, what, what if there's somebody that, you know, maybe has a, a high credit score and a good work history? Is their, their policy going to be cheaper? Of course. Yeah. So there's really three factors that impact the cost of a policy with the guarantors. And the three factors are the monthly rent, the renter's risk profile, and then the amount of coverage that the landlord selects for that applicant. Um, so as, you know, obviously the higher the credit score, the, you know, the lower the risk of the applicant, the cheaper the policy will be for them. So just to give you one more example, let's use a medium risk renter. Let's say they have a 650 credit score. Maybe they're self-employed. They have slightly inconsistent income. So you want some extra coverage. Again, on a $1,000 a month apartment, let's say you only require five months of rent coverage and one month of deposit coverage. In that case, it's only going to cost about $405 or 40% of a month. So less than half. And you're getting six months. Okay. And then like, what about like for your top tier tenant? Like what, what would that same coverage be for someone with a great credit score? So that same coverage, let's say the same six months of coverage for a 750 credit score would be about 30 to 35% of a month's rent. So it does, you know, it's, it's marginal. There's not a a huge difference with the credit uh, score differences. It really, it starts to get a little bit more expensive if, if people have really deep subprime. Okay. Okay. So then what happens say when the lease expires? Like, so this is an insurance policy that, that they're buying for year one of the lease. What happens on year two? Yeah, that's a great question, Dan. So our rent coverage or lease guarantee does have to be renewed for each lease term in order for you to retain the protection the good news is we do provide a 10% discount to the tenant. So, you know, it, it really starts to, to get less expensive uh, for each lease term as it as they, you know, live in the apartment for longer. Uh, the great news is our deposit coverage in most states is actually now effective for the life of tenancy, which means that it doesn't have to be renewed for each lease term. And so that actually that cost of the deposit coverage drops off after the first uh, lease term. OK, so you know, it's, it's, again, it's, we work with landlords to figure out how much coverage they want to require up front. And then how much coverage do you want to require for uh, tenants that renew? Tell me about your company. I mean, are, are, how long have you guys been doing this for? And like, is, you know, are, is this, it, it, this isn't like something you're running out of your garage, right? Like, are, are you guys like a legit company? We, we, in fact, are a legit company. Okay. And we, uh, we've been in business now for about seven years. I actually joined the company back almost six years ago. Uh, so I've been at the company for a long time. And, and today, we're proud to be partnered with and trusted by some of the largest property managers in the country, as well as aspiring real estate investors and landlords uh, nationwide. And with over $2 billion in rents guaranteed and deposits replaced to date, we've really helped countless landlords sleep better at night knowing their rent is guaranteed. Okay. 
Wow. Okay. So you guys have been around for a while. Like this is, this isn't something that you, you guys aren't like a, a real young startup. I mean, you, you sound like you're a very well funded company. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually partner with a number of A rated insurance carriers that actually back the risk for the insurance policies uh, that we issue to landlords. So there's really no risk that landlords are taking on when partnering with us. We've been in business for a long time. We've paid millions of dollars in claims to our landlord partners. Um, and we also have raised a lot of money in funding as well. You know, I, I really like this. I, I really think this is an interesting idea. And I, I think I'm going to try this when I have my next turnover. I, 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 I really, I, I just, I don't think a one month security deposit is really enough protection. And I, I really think that, that, that this is something that could benefit just about all of our listeners. So if somebody wants to get started, somebody wants to learn more, like what, what's the best way for someone to, to find out more and, and to, uh, to get started? Sure. So it's really simple. Uh, you can come to theguarantors.com. And it only takes a matter of minutes for you to actually enroll your property yourself, which is which is awesome. We have the ability where landlords can go in, add their property, and set up their coverage. From there, like you mentioned, you know, the next time you have a turnover or an apartment that's available, you may want to make this a requirement of the tenant's lease in order to qualify so that you get that extra protection. Um, you can offer this at any point for a new lease. So the only... The only caveat there is it can't be offered in the middle of someone's lease term or a policy can't be purchased mid-lease. But if it's a tenant coming up for renewal or you have a new vacant unit, that would be a perfect opportunity to invite a renter. Right in our landlord portal, it's really simple for you to go in, uh, type in the renter's email address. You could actually even customize the coverage on a one-off basis for each referral if you wanted to. And from there, it's a free application for the renter. They submit a quick questionnaire. We quote them and we send you a policy. Okay, so I go on there and I sign up and then I guess that there's a link that gets sent to the applicant or to my tenant? Exactly, yeah. So you'll go in, you'll sign up as a landlord, you'll enroll your properties. Really all we need is the the address and the the legal entity for the property so that we can list you as the beneficiary for the insurance policy. But all you'll do is, like I said, type in the email address for the renter, they'll get an invitation they fill out that quick form, no application fee, so they really have nothing to lose. And we only run a soft uh, credit pull, so their credit score is not impacted at all. And from there, they purchase the policy. We send it to you via email. You'll also have access to it within your landlord portal. That website, again, is theguarantors.com. Real interesting idea. I, I definitely want to give this a shot when I have my next turnover. Thank you for checking out this bonus episode. I'll be back with a regular interview on Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.